Carl and Brendan here from Games Brains, the headbanging life, gbhbill.com for short. And it is list time. Live performances, top EPs, top tracks, top discoveries, and of course, this one. The big one, I guess, it's certainly going to be the longest video of all. It is top albums. Now, I mentioned the EPs and I'm going to mention here. Thank you, Brendan, for telling me to take my head for a shit and stop on us doing 50 albums, as you pointed out correctly to me, which you pointed out last year and I could probably forgot about this year. Nobody gives a shit what our top 48th album of the year is. Um, so we have cut this down into 25. It is top 25 albums of the year. 25 from me, 25 from Brendan. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk you through them um, from 25 down to one. I will get us started with my 25th album of best album of the year. And we start with the album Death Mother by the band Blood It, released via Church Road Records. Get used to hearing that label's name in this run. Uh, this is the sound of beautiful misery, a sound that you simply love to wallow in. The Blood It are a revelation in experimental music. As an entity, they are very unpredictable. There is simply no way to kind of understand the direction the music will take. It is obsessive discomfort it is melodic it is dark it is heavy it's evil it's nasty it's emotional it's got all these fucking layers and elements that you're simply going okay that track's gone what the hell's next oh this is this is weird what did oh oh no the, that's it chaos now it, it's that kind of experience but my god does it captivate it's so disconcerting that you might come away at the end of it going i don't know if i like that but then you're like i'm gonna have another go and I'm still not sure if I like that, but there's something more and so on and so forth and so on. Uh, Death Mother by Blood It is my number 25. Uh, my 25th one <coughs> is All of This for Nothing by The Crawling. Um, so this come out through Grind Scene Records uh, on the 4th of August. Uh, found this band, became a fan of this band at Bloodstock, actually. <laughs> we saw them play there. Yeah, a couple um, of years back now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um and yeah, I've been a fan really of them since then and listened to, you know, everything that they did and released now. And, uh, you know, I know kind of what to expect with the crawling. I'm not dark, shrouded, kind of heavy, atmospheric, you know, quite miserable <laughs> a lot of the time as well. Um, I do you think this is, this is like my favorite release of theirs so far. Uh, I've listened to this a lot since it came out and like still do regularly. I think, um, over time, it's surpassed previous ones. I still have the previous records as well, so I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll change my mind on that eventually. But I also like, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, there are some slight changes, up, like slight moments of creativity and variability to show the band of also not just sort of releasing the same stuff. You know, I mean, they're like they're growing and evolving along the way. So you know, occasion, occasional, a bit more use on sort of melancholic melody here and there, and yeah. So number twenty-five, the crawling. Good album, good band as well. Okay, 24 for me is the album In the Absence of Light by the band Grief Symposium, released by Church Road Records. Um, <laughs> Grief Symposium, Deal in Darkness, and God genre bent. Top 10 labels. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Grease composed of Deal of Darkness and a genre band extremely heavily. Uh, soundscapes that blend doom, death, and black metal, but then they cover it with this gloomy level, mind melting level of atmosphere. This album is grim, it's imaginative, it's horror laden, but it's really heavy, really dark, really oppressive shit. Um, if I'm really feeling quite miserable, this is the sort of shit I would put on. Um, really memorable for that. Grief Symposium in the Absence of Light, number 24. Uh, my 24th is the album Recovery by the band To Kill Achilles. Uh, big fan of this band. Um, I think this album, not only is it, for me, the best stuff they've released, but I think it's actually a considerable leap as well, which is saying a lot because I'm a big fan of the previous stuff as well, but it's, it's mm. a considerable leap. Um, there's some changes in the band. Uh, I think you wrote the review for this and said in that, you know, about like the sort of emotional honesty that you get from the band. And like, you do feel that still a hundred percent change up in the way that the vocals are delivered. Uh, the song rats for me in particular, man, that song, like I'll, I'll, I'll probably be listening to that forever. There's a lot of great songs in this, but I fucking love that song. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. And uh, yeah, so it's just a, 
I think that they're just a really, really fucking honest, talented, clever, creative band. Um, they're probably just yeah. I mean, I, I mean, they are well regarded, but you know, they probably they deserve, I think, a lot, a lot more. Uh, and this album, yeah, it's my twenty fourth favorite. It might feature in this list, um, but while I'm here, I might as well promote something. Do go check out the interview, uh, most recent interview with Mark Tyndall of that. It's about an hour long, and it is fucking immense. One of my favorite interviews conducted over this entire year. Um, generally one of the most likable, honest, lovable people you'll ever, ever hear, speak to. Um, yeah. Okay. Number 23 for me is Orm with their self-titled album, Orm, out by a trepanation recordings. My God, what band goes, hey, their debut record, debut record will be two tracks long, but will be 95 minutes long. <laughs> two tracks, one around 42 minutes, one around 54 minutes. Insane. Uh, the experiment, it's an experimental form of doom mixed with drone. Um, and it, I'm telling you now, it's an acquired taste. Look, that time alone should tell you that. But drone and doom mixed together, experimenting as hell, giving you feelings of fear, wonder, despondency, horror, admiration, loss, l hope. Regardless, you're going to feel something Listen to this, but it does require an investment. I accept that. I think it was so fucking brave to, for anyone mad enough to go, this is what we'll do as a starting point. And I just fell in love with it. Admittedly, I don't listen to it as much as I should because, Jesus, that, I mean, that's, my driving to work in the morning is around 35 minutes long. I ain't getting through one of the tracks, let alone both of them in that drive. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's that thing. But God, I really like this album. That's mad, isn't it? I, just, it I, is. I, I, I appreciate the fact that they're really kind of like laying their cards out from the off, you know, this, this is what we are. You're ever going to like this or not, so... Yeah, massive shout out uh, to Orm, number 23. Yeah, that's mad. Um, so my number 23, uh, I don't always say this every year, but I'm just going to put it out there. Like when we do these lists, like the 25, there is, like sometimes it you know, there, it might seem like an album that I've waxed lyrical about and then actually it appears really far down this list, but we're doing like a 25 out of like 100 plus. Yeah. If, you're, if you're in the top 25, it's because you're all fucking awesome. But anyway. You bear in mind that we've, again, covered like nearly 700 albums this year overall. So, do you know what I mean? There's 698 of them, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> um, so the album to number 23 for me is Time Held Me Great and Dying by the band mm -hmm. Offness, uh, which come out in June via Nature Mat Productions. Um, I didn't actually listen to this album before seeing them at Bloodstock. I knew, oh. I knew it had come out, but I went to see them at Bloodstock and that was my first experience of them. And actually, I kind of like, a, in a weird way, appreciate that a little bit because it was cool to see them live and then love that and then go from that and then listen to the records. I just heard, I'd, some of them I'd mm. heard live. So that was kind of cool. But, you know, look, they're a supremely talented band. Very, very professional, uh, atmospheric, melodic black metal. Really, really enjoyed the album. I think like it, like I said, even with the live performance, but then listening to the back on the album, it like appears to be a band that if you know if you played it to me and said like oh what sort of position are they in their career i'd probably say that though they're quite well seasoned and <laughs> probably have a fair few albums under their belt you know and that for that to be a debut and i think i think it's fantastic i think there's a lot of creativity across the whole thing but it's still got plenty of heaviness plenty of atmosphere um yeah so a really really massive uk talent there it is i won't say much here um okay number 22 for me is the album closure by the band an autumn for crippled children out via prosthetic records uh this is right up my straight uh black metal mixed with shoegaze um it's all about feeling um disconcerting and exhilarating in equal measures it's very harsh lo-fi blackness but with also tormenting atmosphere and emphatic melody uh it shouldn't be surprised this is naturally going to be attracted to someone like me this is one of my favorite styles of music and this is just a grand continuation of what this band's capable of it will it makes your soul ache but you'll bang your head as well it's beautiful misery it's one of my favorite terms for music like this um beautiful misery and my 22nd, uh, more brutal misery, we'll go with. Uh, and it's the album It All Returns to Nothing by Burner from Carl's favorite label, Church Road Records. Uh, I didn't really, again, I, I wish I'd had more time on my hands this year. I've struggled with live performance because I know like, you got to see them a couple of times. 
Um, I didn't know who the band were. We did a track. No, we didn't. We did a, a reaction video to mm-hmm. one of their songs. And and I was like, I was blown away basically by the kind of in your face brutality of it originally. Uh, and from that song, I can't remember which one it was. It might have been uh, It All Returns to Nothing. It might have been out. I think that was his single. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, we came off came off the back of that, and obviously, then when the album came out, got the album, and I, you know, I do genuinely appreciate the fact that for the vast majority of it, it is an attack on the senses. But the more you listen to it, the more you pick out and you start picking out those little moments of groove and like you know, in, in amongst all of the chaos and all that, you know. So, uh, yeah, I became a big fan of the album and the band off the back of it. Um, so yeah, obviously they're not going anywhere, so I get an opportunity to see them next year. Yeah, they're so kind of fresh and new. Yeah. yeah. Um, my number 21. You know what? It's kind of cool to occasionally get to do this because you know, we're no one alls. And mm-hmm. so like, oh, look at us knowing all these underground bands and putting these in. So every so often you get to go for a biggie. And I actually have a biggie here. This came out on Nuclear Blast. It is The Weight of the Mask by Svalbard. And you all know who Svalbard are. Um, yeah, this album is about exercise and demons, and it is Svalbard back and more passionate than ever. It's a triumphant release. Uh, no single song is fan lacking. They are one of the best bands in the world already, but albums that has proved that this was such a fantastic release for me. Real heart and soul, real energy, really delivering that what you want from Svalbard, but also sounding like, okay, you're getting it now. You've really found your groove. You've really found this perfect mix of anthemicness, but also being incredibly heavy and nasty and in your face and honest and upfront. Um, when I listened to this, I was like, well, yeah, there's because uh, I, I get a little worried when the buzz is there and the mainstream media side of the press is banging on about a band. I'm like, okay, they do this a lot. And I like Svalbard, but one of his albums really is as great as what I'm hearing it is. And I generally thought it was, it really was. So it's my number 21. That's cool. Uh, my number twenty one. This is this is um, uh, it's not an odd one that it's in here because I think it's well deserved to be in here. I think this is an odd one because it's one I've only been listening to more recently, but mm-hmm. really, really, really like a lot. That's why it's at my twenty first position. And think that if I'd started this a few months earlier, it would be further and further down. So the album is Closure by An Autumn for Crippled Children. Amazing. Um, so another one that you you reviewed, and I think that's probably why I just didn't, you know, how it is. We're all grabbing different things, and then by the time I've got to the point where I'm like, oh, let me go back and look at listen to some of these ones that I've missed, and this is one of the ones. At the moment, I'm just kind of obsessed uh, on the song "I See You But Never Clearly." I have listened to the whole album. I think the whole album is a phenomenal piece of music. Um, I genuinely do. Uh, you know, plenty of like stuff like I can easily get into where it kind of utilizes the heaviness and the black metal side of things although weirdly the song that i'm most obsessed with at the moment is a bit more atmospheric it's still got plenty of heaviness in it you know don't get me wrong but you know it still leans a bit more on the atmosphere side of things so didn't really know an awful lot about these guys to be honest with you i know they're not new um they're obviously on prosthetics records as well so a decent sort of size label there Mm. as well but love this album uh, listening to it a lot recently, probably like I said, only really in November. I think when I first get, managed to get the chance to give it a spin, and from that point to now, yeah, it's great. I, it's a good thing, right? You know, it's one of those wonderful things. It's like, oh, okay, oh, there's some stuff I haven't. Even, I have not listened to it because I'm reviewing it. It's just been reviewed by somebody else. Now I'll give it a chance. It's like, oh, this is awesome. So now, five months after it come out, I'm like, oh, it's like a new album for me. You know, it's great. First, our first that's our first doubled up one. There it is, not for crippled children. We both have it. Uh, okay, my number 20 then. Uh, the Fear of Letting Go by Holofront v- out via UNFD. I like Holofront, uh, but I didn't go in with too many high expectations of this, and I came away blown away. This is their best release to date, no question. They're heaviest, the most passionate, and their most intense. It is a sound of a band pouring all their pain and frustration into something that they should be so, so proud of it. The fact that it is a wonderfully tight 10 tracks. They've been really smart here. They have delivered the best. I reckon there was a lot on the cutting room floor, and they've been like, here's the 10 strongest we've got, 10 absolute bangers. Anthems, unforgettable listens. I was blown away by the fear of letting go by Holofront. It's my number 20. Uh, my number 20 then is Rise of the Lifeless by Tortured Demon. Um, fan of the band anyway. Uh, you know, I was very intrigued to see what their follow up 
would be like and it's 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 not only a very very strong album it's another one where you can see clear growth um you know from the song kind of writing perspective but also just like the production and everything like that it just it sounds like a proper step up mm. uh really really good album great band anyway and just nice to see that kind of second album coming out and backing up you know the the uh debut so yeah yeah certainly saying a lot more anthemic yeah number 19 I'm sorry folks got to do this again square bracket space <laughs> b space o space l space d square bracket closing bolt with the album Bracket 05 bracket released via Dunk Records. And Dunk Records is all under, all lowercase with an exclamation mark between the Dunk and the Records, not a space, because they were the entire thing was awkward. Um, yeah, obviously, another list of banging on about this, and it's drone. It is drone, but percussion heavy, two basses and a drum, with some of the most creative stuff I've heard all year. It is not for everyone. I'm telling you right now, a lot of people are going to say this is shite. Uh, but I just absolutely loved it because it's pure experimentation that just fascinates me. It adds, it's heavy because of the amount of percussion in it, but it's laborious am am ambience too. I think it's so creative and that's why I fell in love with it. Uh, yeah, so Bolt, 05, number 19. That name. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, my 19th then is a big band. Uh, uh, and let me get my words mixed up. The band is Insomnium. The album is Anno 1696, which came out on Century Media in February. Yeah. Um, they're a talented band, like everyone should know that, I would imagine, by now. Yeah. It's quite, you know, it's quite it's not a unique record because it is very much them doing them, but uh, you know, just still hitting like an up a top, top level of quality. Obviously, with it being that concept that goes back to that year and all the horrors and you know, witch hunts and all the stuff that was going on with that. Uh, have that short story kind of element that comes with it. Uh, but mostly I just find it, you know, it's just musically clever. It's intelligent. It's engaging. It's experimental at times, but it's also sometimes just, I would never say really say standard metal <laughs> with insomnium, but like it's standard insomnium. Uh, so yeah, I also think like they're, they're, they're very far into their career. They've always kind of hit a level of consistency. Uh, I think this album is one of my favorites of theirs. Yeah, I think it's a fair shout on my end as well. Number 18, uh, Blossom by People Slicer. Aesthetic records, um, a concept album that finds People Slicer in experimental mood. To be honest, man, they could have gotten away, but got away with just doing Mirrors Part 2. And just putting out something similar to that, but they decided to go out there with it. I remember when Blossom, the single, came out and I did a reaction to it, and I was really on the fence about it and was like, I'm not sure if I like this. When I heard it in the concept of the album, I loved it, and it's one of my favorite tracks on the album now. Uh, the concept really comes through here it's evolution, it's a story, it's a collective, varied mix of ideas, it's creative. And um, Pupil Slicer, this is still an, also an assault of a brace of heaviness, beyond a known pre no four solutions. That people slice the nastiness is here completely. It's just there's a lot more ideas going on here. Um, the more time I think you listen to this album, the more it impresses. Uh so yeah, number 18, Blossom by People Slicer. Something a little different for my number 18. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it is Avatar with Dance Devil Dance. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe the biggest surprise of that is that Avatar released an album and it's it's all the way down in 18th. I think that is the surprise, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think it's a very, very strong album. There's some songs in it that I absolutely adore. Um, some songs in it that will be the sort of songs I listen to as part, like Avatar classics. Uh, it's not the strongest al Avatar album for me, that's the truth. But there are some songs in it that, nothing bad on it, but they're a bit more forgettable. Um, yeah. But I love the band. I love the album. I love what they're doing with it. We saw saw it live, you know, so I still think it's a really, really strong album. I think the difference with Avatar is, is that the songs in there that I don't think are as strong as anything else are still a lot stronger than what a lot of other people do. It's just not as strong as what Avatar do. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. The bar's quite high uh, for me with these guys. So, uh, th yeah, Dance Double Dance, number 18. The shock of Avatar being out of the top 10. There it is. Number 17, The Hirish Effect. Uh, with the album Urine, 
uh, out via Long Uran. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uran, U R I A N, um, via Long Branch Records. I'm going to keep this one really short. It's simply this: there's prog metal. Prog metal exists. We all know what that is. But then there's prog metal that they, this band does, that Hero Effect does. It is completely different. It is unexpected. It takes you in directions you will never fully be able to comprehend the first time round. It is an elating experience. Uh, it's my number 17. Cool. Uh, my 17 is The Northern Crusades by Ice Storm. Um, their fourth concept album, their fourth album, uh, but the first one for me, listening to it, released independently on the 24th of February, Catalan based band founded way back in 2006, which seems too long ago for just the four albums, but hey. Mm. Um, so, you know, as, as the name suggests, like, you know, the band's called Ice Storm, the album's called The Northern Crusade. You could probably get an idea of what this is already, but it is done very, very well. So, you know, it's melodic death metal in the Amon Amarth ish style. So, melodic death metal with that kind of Viking war battle. Uh, tint to it and it's a really really strong album it is it is i've given this one a few listeners actually i like it too number 16 and our second album the double up in although mine's a little higher than yours it is it all returns to nothing by burner church road record uh yes but it was hotly anticipated burner made a lot of noisy underground um with a hardcore death metal black metal combination that is quite insane quite chaotic at times but with a ton of layers um it's doozy of an album uh the glorious and garn carnage just it just it just captivates you it just excites it just interests and it just makes you want to keep on listening and find out more and more about this band um yeah 16 burner it all returns to nothing uh my 16th is a uk band as well alt metal band called vexed uh, oh, the next al- album negative energy came out via napalm records on the 23rd of june obviously doing something right this band um you know this is their what second release uh you know to they're on napalm records they're making a bit of a name for themselves mm. um i think they're really really good i like the similar i guess in not in style but in openness and uh around the topics they sing about and you know being quite quite open and modern i guess you know exploring things like ptsd survivor's guilt mental health uh loss things like that so negative energy the band themselves describe the album as like a conduit for their own burdens uh three piece you know it's just a class it's really really quite a classy album it's got loads of things going on with it it's brutal and heavy and very very open and honest exploring topics like i said that are quite deep and you know, you kind of have to approach them, I suppose, in a certain way. And the styles of each of the songs are matched to the topic that they're trying to put across. Uh, you know, so it's very, very nice. It's nicely produced. It's quite clean and crunchy. Mm. It is polished, but it has like a, a bit of a raw tinge when it needs to. Lots and lots of talent on show. The drums are wonderful. Loads of great guitar work. But really, the standout instrument on it, to be honest with you, is the vocals, which are just they're really really powerful but like not just heavy there's so many different styles and being able to switch to that singing and everything like that really really works so yeah negative energy by vex great band great album 15 guess who released this album oh it's church road records <laughs> it's earth reaper by wallowing my 15th favorite album of the year look sci-fi extreme metal band insane pure fucking extreme noise limitless imagination and the ambition of this band is clear by the amount of times i've seen them live um this album is very very creative it's an album of two halves effectively the first six tracks of the album serve as a prologue to the title track which is earth reaper which is the finale and it's 22 minutes long um and it is just pure brilliant just unbelievable cleverness um and you just need to hear it, people. You just need to hear it. to. And I don't think you will understand it either because they are so fucking unique. Uh, but I love it. And I find myself listening to this album a lot. And I have seen this band three times live this year. So there's clearly something I've I've got with them. So yeah, number 15, Earth Reaper by Wallowing. And my number 15, uh, back up still with the big bands. And this is a nuclear blast band. Their 14th album. <laughs> this is Foregone by In Flames. Uh, not always a fan of everything In Flames do, but I do think this album is 
really, really strong. Probably one of their best anyway of recent times um, of modern modern in flames. Uh, like I said, 14th album, big career behind them. Obviously, everybody's heard the name, even if you're not a fan, everyone knows who in flames are. No um, question. If you're not a fan, that might turn you off for listening to this album, potentially. But I do think this album is very, very strong. Um, yeah. Obviously, Mellow Death, so hey, that's good for me. But uh, also helped probably a bit because I then this came out earlier in the year and then I saw them in Bloodstock and they also played a couple of tracks from this as well. So, you know, everything kind of was kind of lined up for this album to to hit me this year. And uh, yeah, it's my 15th favourite. It is. I'm not that big of an Inflames fan either. Um, and I'm certainly not as into Mellow Death as you are, but even I was impressed by Forgon. Um, so yeah, it does speak volumes about the quality of this album, I think. Yeah. Okay, number 14 for me, it is the band OWDWYR uh, with the album Receptor self released, an extreme metal convergence of tech, death, prog, and grind framed around a classical core. It is a very unique, stupendously creative, absurdly diverse, and confidently insightable, sightful album. All set, all the separate elements of what OWD. WYR do are familiar. You got the tech death brutality, the fantastical progressive twists, the grinding and national horror, and the classical turns. But what makes this album so clever is how they all mash together and how it works. It shouldn't. That's the thing. And it certainly shouldn't be compelling all the way through. It should be abrasive. It should be annoying. It should almost be irritating at certain points, but it doesn't. This is one of the most unforgettable releases of the year. It It is weird, right? Because like we have this problem is that, you know, when it might be number 14, but it got a 10 out of 10, mm. but so did everything above this. And you say, well, the addition at 10 out of 10 is too easily then, but that's not quite how we work. 10 out of 10 is as close to perfection. And when you li- review like 700 al- albums um, mm. in a year, you're going to get a few like that. They're all deserving of top spots. And I see this as uh, sort of one of the best albums of the year, but it is 14. Uh, my 14th is a little bit different um so season of miss band band famed for throwing a lot at things and it's uh near Bliviscarus with their oh, album yes. exel uh australian band progressive metal i guess um i don't know i don't mm. really know what to categorize them as a little bit because there is a lot going on yeah <laughs> you know and there is a lot going on in this it's their fourth album uh, it's an album they've been working on for a long time. They they started recording it in 2020 and then for it to be released in 2023. But there's like a lot of backstory behind that and problems the band were having and relationship yeah. issues and things like that. But, you know, they came back out swinging. Uh, obviously, lots going on, like I said. You know, they that's one of the things that I think impresses me the most about them, which is that the songs can be quite long and they seem to throw every single thing into a song. And you think like, oh, God, could this be messy? But it's mm. not like it actually just it's really, really well put together. They're very uh, emotion driven songs. They're quite atmospheric. The the violin with clean vocal violins, Tim Charles. Um, it's it's not the predominant instrument, but it's a key part of what Neil Liviscaris do. And it's such a talent, you know, but that combined then with the heaviness and everything like that. I think um, I'm a big fan of this band. I think they're really, yeah. really strong. And I think this album is a fantastic example of what they do. They're so unique. Yeah. Number 13, uh, Position Momentum by Calligram, uh, Prosthetic Records released. Hopefully you kind of have an idea of what Calligram kind of do. It's a familiar tornado of noise, battered and broken, blackened atrocity of music. And that is very much what we get here, a continuation of that brutality. However... Listen to this album, you will notice and you will find that they've grown, they have evolved, and they've now found new and fresh ways to continue to dish out punishment. It is a step above for them musically. To me, I found this album to be the most complete sounding release that Calligram have done. Yeah. Uh, For me, the next one is The Futility of Breathing by Dimwind, um, Mm -hmm. Gothenburg, Gothenburg based metal band post metal band uh instrumental duo um they're the very sad story behind this which essentially just amounts to uh extreme loss during the recording mm. process uh they're generally a, a band that works off of melancholy and sadness and emotion anyway which just kind of kicked this up to another level of that 
um, with the band really kind of pouring everything they had into it. And it comes through in that. It is by far the saddest album I have listened to this year. And there are no lyrics. It's purely instrumental. It's the way it's delivered in the music and that. So it's it's an extremely intelligent, atmospheric, emotional album to listen to. Wow. It sounds like something I want to hear, but then, my God, it sounds like I need to be in the right mind frame that I need to, yeah. yeah. Not, not Christmas mind frame. Wait, <laughs> wait till the January blues kick in, then listen to it. That will really hit you. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12. It is Descent by Orbit Culture from Seek and Strike Records. Uh, Orbit Culture, a big fan beforehand, but, my God, expectations of something great was well and truly met with a massive step forward for this band. Super, super good. Diverse rousing from beginning to end that's the thing i think i found most about this album was my god did it get my blood pumping from the start to the end they knocked it out of the park here for me there's not a single thing wrong with this record from beginning to end this is all but culture at our absolute best uh descent number 12 may feature again mm. um for my number 12 is the album the weight of remembrance by tribunal uh released via um 20 bucks spin uh goth metal goth i don't know it's, it's goth very gothic there's black metal vocals there's clean vocals that's you know miser misery in a church sort of stuff with stained glass windows and shit behind you <laughs> um but it is it's it's a wonderfully well composed album it's very very clever it's quite beautiful in that sort of sad dark way to listen to i uh, said heavy uh said in different videos where it's appeared before heavy um leaning on instruments like the cello uh you know which are which are also i think perfect for that gothic sound to be honest oh no, yeah but not only are we in a church dressed in black but we also have a cello it's like oh shit that's goth <laughs> most miserable string instrument of all yeah <laughs> so you know it is like I, I you know i kind of like called it like it look it's it's atmospheric it's dark but it's morose but it is beautiful as well uh, it's very well pieced together it's more like a piece of art with like perfect brush strokes in it but I, I, I don't normally like this style of music. I find mm. it too elaborate, too, you know, slow sometimes. But it's had the little moments of heaviness in it. And even if even if it didn't, I would I think I would still appreciate it for the art that they've created and it and it's a debut, which is yeah. amazing. Oh, okay. Uh, and the last one before we reach the top 10, just missing out on the top 10. It's been mentioned already, but it's my turn now. Recovery by To Kill Achilles from A Rising Empire. Um, you said this, and I'm going to follow it up. There are a few bands who epitomize believable honesty and relatability quite like To Kill Achilles. Uh, they've proven themselves to be an exceptionally lovable band with a bevy of brilliant tracks. And then we have this album. And it's simply phenomenal. Uh, a massive step forward in sound. You mentioned Rat. I want to throw out Chemical Counterpart um, as another one that's just beyond listenable. It's yeah. a mix of stuff that's familiar, but there's also a ton of melodramatic tracks there as well that really, really work. It is one of the strongest uh, lyrical based. And I'm not always the biggest in lyrics, as you should know from Track by Tracks and all that. It's more your jam. But yeah. this is something I pay attention to with Kill Achilles. It is an album that pushes them up to a higher level, I think. And uh, I only expect them to grow from this. So yeah, number 11, Recovery. Yeah, there's some great stuff on the album. Because just as you were saying that, and I always said Rats, and, but then I was like, oh, and, and The Cave. The Cave is such a special song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wonderful band. Um, to go from that believable honesty set and deep rooted in human truth, we're going to go the opposite direction and go to Scar Symmetry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this is, but it's about as far away from like honest human truth, isn't it? So we're, we're, we're up in space now. Um, yeah. so this is phase two Xenotaph, uh, part two, finally, of the Singularity Trilogy. Um, been a long time, spoken about that a lot across many different videos. I was very, very relieved to see it actually come out and see the band appear to be quite active again and at the moment, like so hopefully whatever troubles were were holding all of this up are behind them and I don't have to wait quite so long for the third chapter. Because that would be mad if I do. That would essentially mean three decades, <laughs> you know, for the three albums to come out. But but this one's a story out. though. 
It is mad, and it's it's one hell of a story. Um, what I really really appreciated about this album, first of all, because it was something I worried about. Um, I really really enjoyed Neo Human. That was like what turned me on to this uh, in the first place. Then, uh, I and Neo, I was worried really that it had been so sorry. Neo, it's the sick. Yeah, it's Neo Human. Phase one Neo Human. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I get myself confused now. Uh, I was worried that the gap would mean that the concept was gone, like it didn't make sense anymore. You know, like as I don't know, you kind of feel like a concept like that, a story like that. You could almost need to be in the moment, right? Mm. You know, uh, but but it didn't, it, and it did all come flooding back to me, and it worked, and it felt like a natural progression. So I appreciated that musically. Look, I think it isn't it's scar symmetry doing scar symmetry stuff, right? You know, there's a wide array of different things going on, different vocals, um, lots of guitar solos, bit of electronica, you know, really, really, really brutally heavy at times. And then at times a bit more electronica driven and ethereal and spacey. Cause like we are in yeah. space at the end of the day. So gotta have some space shit in there. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of it. I've got a couple of songs in it that I absolutely love and uh, like kind of up there with, you know, songs like limits to infinity from the first one and that. So, you know, I'm really, really happy. Glad to have them back. Glad to have the album back out. And I'm hoping now to see them out. Hoping to see them out on tour next year, to be honest. Yeah, with you. Be... a couple of festival appearances, maybe, you know, that I can get to. That would be quite nice as well. I get that too. And one of the more interesting things you were saying about the whole concept, I I I I would have wondered as well that uh, there's an argument to say that like the likes of Scar Symmetry, the um back then was when you were not necessarily finding your feet in Melodeath, but when you were discovering a lot of Melodeath bands. And in between yeah. the time between releases, you found a lot more, a lot more unique, smaller bands and all that. That Scar Symmetry could have been left behind yeah, by absolutely. you just be, by being bettered by other bands. I mean, weirdly, I think maybe the gap in a way created this sort of atmosphere of like tension and intrigue and when are they coming back and you know what i mean like like you know i don't know perhaps if it had just been released one after the other each year it would have got lost in the mix of everything else i was listening to but it was almost mm -hmm. like becoming this like epic like tolkien story about when the next scar symmetry will come out to the point that it was as exciting wondering when it would come out as it was when it like getting the music you know <laughs> yeah Maybe so then they know purpose. what they need to do for the next part then is make you yeah. wait. Wait 20 years this time. <laughs> okay, top 10 then. Um, you know what? For all my love of deep atmospheric music and post and shoegaze and all that stuff, there are still plenty of bands who just want to fuck me up that I just love. Uh, and there's no one out there who maybe does it better than Werewolves. This is my enemies look and sound like me. Prestec Records, the Australian death metal trio. Uh, simply do one thing and all they do is smash. They batter, they bruise. It's furious, it's feral. It is noise, they are chaos and I fucking love them for it. I don't know what it is about this particular band, this level of savagery that just appeals. I mean, part of it actually, I can tell you a part of it is because they don't take themselves too seriously. Evident by the t-shirt I have, that is so offensive on the back that I can only wear it at festivals. And I wore it out tangent and had someone tap me on the shoulder and be like, what the fuck is that? Like, ask me where I got it from. I can't quite remember what it says, but it says that you, that's what you get for like shit fucking music, you shit cunt, is written on the back <laughs> with the werewolves on the front, you know? Um, but yeah, this band, I just absolutely love them. Uh, I got so excited about this release that I... I ordered it from a came from Australia to fucking vinyl. Like the wait ages for it. Um, just, I'll just wear it. <laughs> yeah, they just they just they just cause so much noise, and it's so straightforward. And I love them for that. So where was my enemies looking sound like me? That's my number ten. Uh, my number ten is at one with the night sky by Lightlawn, which came out on the 29th of September via Black Lion Records. Uh, post black metal. Um, yeah, contrasting strong structures. They like to try and do this interplay between light and dark, you know. So there, it is dark, it is gloomy. It, but it, they, they also like to then bring in, um, I don't know, say a higher toned lead guitar to try and do that kind of offering rays of light, like through the darkness and that sort of stuff. So it's quite weighty things when it goes heavy, vocally and lyrically. Uh, well, vocally more than lyrically. Uh, it leans quite heavily on the black metal side of things, like quite barky and growly 
um but then with that you know that high pitch sort of like lead guitar melody sitting behind it all mm. and just sort of like conducting everything and hmm. so yeah like I guess, I guess you know when you kind of describe it pretty stereotypical of what you might expect from the post black metal kind of experience but again just the band that are doing it really really well that it can be familiar it can be all of that but if you're doing it well it don't fucking matter Speaking of doing post, well, it is number nine for me, Marrow with Soul Cultist, Trepanation Recordings, a Liverpool-based post-sludge band. Uh, they marry enthralling post sounds with the dirty, filthy power of sludge. And it really does work. It is a perfect combination. An album that is jaw-dropping with deep, deep depths to their sound. Uh, twists and turns all along the way. Stunning moments with one of the most powerful finales I've heard all year. Eight tracks long. Soul Cultist by Maru. My number eight. Nine. Sorry, nine. And my number nine, a band that's familiar as well to both of us, is A Feast on Sorrow by Urn. There it is. Um, yeah, what do we say about this? Uh, amazing release, obviously, with the original debut, Serpent and Spirit. I think you said it in some of our other lists that you wonder how the follow-up will top that. I agree with what you said before. It does. I think it's a more accomplished overall uh, album, which seems it almost seems painful to say that. Mm. Because then I always want to follow up with go, but I love Serpent Spirit too. Of course. <laughs> but it's better, but but only just. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like you almost like feel like you spend it because they're just two like phenomenal records. I think they're such a talented band. I love the emotion that they put into the music. Guitars are wonderful, vocals are fantastic. Uh it came out quite I'm trying to think when it came out. I can't remember when it came out. August the eleventh. August. Uh I, I I weirdly, although I have listened to the whole album. I will move on to other songs at some point, but I'm still currently stuck listening to Becoming the Ocean, which was like the single that came out. But I'm still like, oh, so I'll listen to that one first. Great fucking track. It is a phenomenal track, but like, there's such a there's such a great band, there's such a talent as well. Um, yeah, so that's my, what was that, my ninth favourite. Yeah. It might appear in this list. I've still got a few more to go. Uh, but for now, it's number eight, Alphod by Die Cat Felic. Uh, released via Season of Mist. Listen, uh, if you'd said to me before I even listened to this album that there was a chance that Die Cat Felique would ever um, get in my top 10, 25, let alone 10, I'd been like, well, no, I know, they, I know it's a unique experience, but I doubt it. And then I heard this album. It's one of the most unique albums of the year. Par for the course for Die Cat Felique. Because well, it, it's a, a, an artist, a band that embodies the do what feels right mantra of music. And you literally never know what you're going to get. There simply are no genre limitations, and that is on full display in this album. It's big. And I don't mean long or that it's a ton of tracks or anything like that. I mean, it's big in sound and big in ideas. Extremely unpredictable, indescribable almost, and unforgettable. There's nobody quite like this artist in metal, and this album really surprised me of how much I was taken back by how strong it is overall with all the unique different variations on metal and the subgenres within it. Alfold. Uh, my number eight is Talgroth by Hellfro. Um, Season of Mist Underground Activist, part of their label that released this on the 1st of December hmm. uh, during some extremely cold weather. And then they released an album that, if you listen to it, will just make you a shitload colder. Uh, <laughs> Icelandic band, Black and Death Metal. Yeah, even actually, to be fair, the band themselves said they drew inspiration from the bleakness of Icelandic winters. <laughs> um, and and there it is. That, you know, it's 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 black and death metal. Like it is heavy. It is in your face at times. Uh, what I love about it is that it does manage to capture that atmosphere that they were trying to get to. It feels cold. It does give you those sorts of bleak visions. Uh, I love as well that it's authentic and it's sung in their native Icelandic. I think mm. that adds an awful lot to it. However, what it does also do is turn writing a review of it into a massive copy and paste exercise because that man, they have some serious fucking things above their letters. Like, oh God, yeah, all right, I can picture it. You get to like a song title and it's like nineteen words long, and they're like, "What are these fucking letters?" Jesus, it's just copy paste, copy paste. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, but look, it adds to the experience a little bit because like I actually have no idea 
what they're singing about, what they're saying, but I can listen to it and feel it and understand it to, you know, to a degree and be completely like, I don't know, in tune with it, even though I don't know what they're singing about. And I love mm. that. That's the power of, of of good music, right? And that's what this is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, It's interesting the way you kind of talk about that, because I'd argue my number seven is the album I had to do the most research for. It's Let the Truth Speak by the band Earthside, out via music theory, recordings and mascot label group. They're a cinematic rock band, and sometimes the word cinematic and rock can go together and not really mean a lot. This literally is. This is music that can be on a soundtrack to a movie, to a film, 100%. And this album is uh, is easily their most elaborate and dense release of the year. And the reason why I needed a shit ton of research is because, excuse me, it features a ton of guests. Like almost every track has guests, several guests on each track, barring like one, I think, which is the only one without a guest, are from a wide array of musical backgrounds. Like I didn't recognize these artists. We're not talking about guests from other metal or rock bands. We're talking about, you know, um, singer songwriters, percussion bands, stuff like that, swing stuff and all that. Um, and all featured on this. And it is a huge fucking journey. It is so clever and so interesting. And one of those across multiple listens that it really starts to make a lot of sense. It is incredibly ambitious. I can't believe they managed to pull it off. And it's mesmerizing stuff. So yeah, let the truth speak by Earthside. A lot of work to listen to, but it's mm. worth the time. It does it sounds mental. Mm. <laughs> um not quite as mental for my seventh one, Nightfall Upon the Asylum by Drama Noir, uh, which came out on, in May, uh, May the 3rd, through Flogger or Flogger Records. I'm not sure mm. how to pronounce it, but a uh, Greek symphonic black metal band. Um, the album Nightfall Upon the Asylum probably blew me away when it came out. Uh, you know, it's an album I'll be listening to presumably for the rest of my life. Um <laughs> I just feel like it's it's one of those ones. It's just very, very complete. You know, there's not a single second that I would see as filler or a moment of weakness across the album. It's just intensely creative and exciting throughout. And every time another song starts or a transition happens into a song, you'll find yourself being like, oh, like, you know, and, and it just does that all the way through. Clearly a load of talent in the band. They're very good at what they do, despite the fact that I'd never heard of them before. Um Drums and vocals are amazing throughout, but the bass guitars, the orchestration, the little symphonic moments, every, like it's one of those albums where like everything has to work or it would just fall apart, you know, and everything has a very, very clear identity, very, very well crafted, well put together. And just, it feels very, very natural, but just feels like it feels like a shit ton of work went in to compose these songs and make them work the way that they do. But yeah, for me, it's one of, well, it's the seventh best album of the year. Love this. I love the unique, different ones that have been pulled out. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's incredible that we haven't doubled up too much up to this no. point. Now, we are going to start hitting a point because you're missing some and I'm missing some. So yeah. they're unlikely to start appearing. And we should know at this point, we've done all our other lists. This is our last video of these lists. So we're hearing the familiar names and stuff yeah. like that, which brings me to number six. It is, of course, Riddles of the Sycophants by Ghosts of Atlantis, Hammerheart Record. The second album from this band, it's a step up in all departments, but maybe none more, more than the grandeur. Uh, this is a massive sound in Ghosts of Atlantis, and the songs all reflect that. Grandiose, but also incredibly heavy. It shows a deepening of their storytelling abilities, which are already bloody fucking strong, but just getting stronger here. And the songwriting abilities, because this is variety. There are some very different stuff and a mix of ideas here. It now holds several of my favorite Ghost of Atlantis songs overall now. And I think that speaks volumes. What if they didn't make it into my list? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they weren't my number. You would have though. a lot of explaining to do, actually. You really would. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you would have to explain that shit if that was the case. Uh, they, they might appear, yeah. <laughs> um, but my num number six is one that has already appeared on your list, and it is Descent by Orbit Culture. Um. To be honest, I would have probably just put it in at least number six, just for Black Mountain uh, on mm. its own. But I also like the rest of the album too, thankfully. Uh, I think been uh, opinion changing for me with Orbit Culture. It's not that I disliked Orbit Culture. I didn't. I just didn't really listen to them a lot, is all it is. 
Uh, and now I can't see myself not fanboying over them, to be honest with you. And, you know, when you hear a song and an album that you love that much and I want to now see it live and I want to be in the crowd when the start of Black Mountain goes off and just be like, oh, you know, turn to people going, oh, I like this one. <laughs> um, you know, but look, it's a really, it's, I, the, what's really special about the album and not just that song is that it's actually strong all the way through. Um, I lo- I've obviously talked about Black Mountain a lot, but there, I, I love the title track, Descent. Uh, it, it, it's just a really, really like fucking heavy, but catchy and infectious groove, you know, with a kind of vicious edge to it, but then also a bit of clean singing every now and then. It, it's for me, and this may be wrong to people that are long term fans of the band, but to me, this is like their master of puppets moment. Like, you know mm. what I mean? This is like, wow, you, it all came together here. What a fucking album. Yeah, I want to see the pit go off with Vultures and North, man. Like, I'd imagine yeah. like that could be an opening track at a live show just to get the energy going. Number five, you've already mentioned it. It's a lot higher on my list. It is Time Held Me Grey and Dying by Offness. Uh, Nature Marched, Nature Marched Productions. Yeah, mm. I struggle um, with that one too. <laughs> yeah, Atmospheric Melodic Black Metal Band debut album, Revelation of British Black Metal, uh, a stunning debut release. Harsh, callous, raw but balanced out by these grander atmospheric moments with deep emotion it's a a really measured really forward thinking release that suggests as you said and i back it up as well a band a couple of albums in stronger than this way way more professional way more on it backed up by an incredible shot bloodstock if this band has the legs with them if it has the, you know, the effort and the energy behind and everybody's game. I can see these guys growing and growing and being eventually on the par with the likes of Infernal Sea and all of that and being up there at that level as being one of those great British black metal bands, um, you know, Winterfellas and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So number five, Time Helby Grey and Dip Dying. And my number five, probably always going to come up at some point. Uh, I think something from these have featured in every other list that I've done and it's the Dracath Saga by Dragon Corpse. Mm. Uh, debut album this year as I've said in every other video a mind-boggling genre challenging piece of music that was scary to listen to until it wasn't anymore and it clicked and it became a refreshing and exciting uh, and actually to be honest one of the albums I can say truly is unique you know you get do get unique stuff I'm not saying we don't but you know this is the first time I've ever heard these genres being mixed together yeah. uh, and it coming out like so well. Uh, the album itself, I really like how it's structured. It is quite short. They, I suppose, you know, some people could argue it is it EP length. There's only really about four or five songs on it, but each song has an interlude between uh, before it. Right. Uh, you know, so it is like eight, eight to 10 tracks long, but you know, it's four or five songs with, like that are, are longer than a minute long and you know aren't really extended intros to a song or an extended outro to the song that had just ended it works still as an album though as listening to it back to back but it's not a concept so if it is a concept it doesn't need to be because it kind of just works as songs of its own um a lot going on of course you know lots of different vocal styles lots of different music styles um a bit of something for everyone in there, but I guess if you're a big real fan of power metal and don't like stuff too heavy, you might struggle with it. And if you like stuff too heavy and don't like it to be too clean, you might struggle with it. But if you want to try something like completely refreshing, completely unique, and something that I genuinely believe has never been done before, or at least I've never heard it be done before. Maybe it has, and I just haven't heard it. Um, Drag of Saga by Dragon Corpse will be the album to go to. There we go. Okay. I think I know two of your top three, but the third one, I can't I quite four, put it. Four, four to go yet. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah. No, you're right. So then I'm missing two. I definitely think I know two of them, but okay. All right. Number four, then for me, it is Symposium by the band Thumos, uh, Snow Wolf Record. Again, another year, and they get an album in here. Not quite the top spot, but close enough. 
progressive post metal band. Uh, this album is a theatrical presentation of Plato's dialogue on the God of Love, Eros. It is a richly detailed, technically impressive, dramatic and atmospheric release. Familiar if you're a fan of this band, but different again in equal measures because it is progressive metal. And there are some really, really clever ideas here with heady themes, heavy emotion, thought provoking and executed immeasurably well, really capturing the concept as well, particularly as it's mostly instrumental. It demands your full attention. It is a great album. Again, this band, I think is phenomenal. I praise. Yes. Poor spot then for me. And this is where we see riddles of the sycophants by Ghost of Atlantis come in. He didn't put it at number one. Outrageous. Ah. Uh, uh, I was trying to think. I was thinking earlier on. I think I love this album. Like, uh, and then the, the the gaps between, to be honest, between most of the top twenty five, but definitely between the top ten and then the top five, are like fucking minuscule. Yeah, nothing really. Yeah, uh, I don't think it was ever in my number one position purely because of some because uh, uh, of when it came out compared to some other albums. That's that's, that's the simple reality of it but oh, i didn't mean album. to put you on the spot there no I no mean, no yeah. i'm always being on the spot i put it at number six I, yeah how dare you <laughs> 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 no i mean as an album like everything that you said i agree with i i do i think it shows a remarkable growth since three six two four uh and i love that album as well yeah it's the album that got me into them as a band uh it's more expansive it's more creative there's different ideas in play it shows that it shows actually like in a way that there's so much more to come from this band because like you sort of seeing the debut and then you're seeing this and you think like, oh shit, what, what else are they going to do? You know, it does stay predominantly stylistically within that sort of symphonic black kind of style with flourishes and touches and whatnot around it. Um, but just, yeah, and some of the songs that are on this album, like the ones that we talk about in our video on our favorite tracks of the year, for example, yeah. You know, there's a good mix. There's a really, really good balanced mix on it. It's a very good album all overall, but it also has many songs that stand out as a, that could all have been singles. There's loads of songs in there that you could have gone, that could have been single, that could have been single, that could have been single. It also flowed really, really well. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's another phenomenal piece of work for them and showing them on the ascendancy. Uh, it's phenomenal that we both put uh, we lost the sick of fans in our top 10 albums of the year. Um, so bravo, Ghost of Atlantis. Okay, this is going to be the last track uh, album we double up on 100% because I'm 99.9% sure my top one and two you don't have um, based off a of previous conversation. So in third place, top three, the third album of best album of the year for me is A Feast on Sorrow by earn uh candlelight records uh obviously we've said already you've said deeply personal record and it's a major step up for earn uh and almost every area not just improving upon serpent and spirit but by moving forward and sounding even more polished it just is a better album overall um it's immersive as fuck that's one of the biggest things i take away from this from the instrumental power to the vast vocals powerful lyrical content this album delivers it's got epics it's got detail it's got heaviness it's got emotion um yeah it, it, it is it's a brilliant brilliant release let alone a brilliant follow-up to serpent and spirit number three and my number three is nemesis ad by serenity um I said before, I'm a fan of Serenity anyway. I was just looking forward to listening to this album when I saw it was coming out. But not not with the idea that it would even break my top 10, to be honest with you. Just that it would be, a, oh, this should be a good album to listen to. Uh, but I think it's their most accomplished work to date. I think it sounds mm. phenomenal. It sounds huge and epic and massive and all things that they've always done, but just sounds this. better. <laughs> it just comes yeah. together right uh it has so many amazing songs on it man from like the really really long um eight and a half sort of minute grand epics you know with heavy moments and solos and big choruses and different choirs coming in uh like reflections of ad uh to sort of shorter two to three minute kind of long beautiful ballads um obviously they lean heavily on george neil houses vocals because he has quite a unique voice um but he's a wonderful singer 
uh and they just sound like a band that just fucking like they just clicked man and just went like everything come together and they were just like oh shit we just created perfection um yeah your so, perfect yeah. blend of songwriting studio just time kind of it was like the, the concept maybe or something like that something they you know everything was just right and and just 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 there and like you know literally from song one to the end i listen to this album a lot still and i will be for a long time um i wouldn't skip a song on it i listen to this album i shuffle within it but you know i i would listen to the whole album i hadn't taken songs out of it to put my playlist if i want to listen to some serenity i put this album on i press play and that's me done for the day fantastic stuff all right number two uh it is yeah it is The Night Is For Dreamers by Dinner Celestial Birds. Uh, a Cheery Wave and A Thousand Arms Music released this together. It is the debut album of the lead instrumental cinematic post rockers. Uh, one with a dynamic sound, intricate detail and narratives weaved into its instrumental soundscape. Um, you said this about one of your albums before, and I'm going to mention it here. This is a great example of an album telling us stories across the songs without the use of a vocalist. And you completely getting it and feeling it and understanding it. It is an impossible task for many, but there are the odd band that does it so fucking well and Dinner Celestial Birds do it and make it seem easy. It surpassed my expectations. Uh, it's simply brilliant. It's one of those records that envelops you, but it's got a great mix of tunes. It's not all about emotion and crying and sad and a melody. There's upbeat stuff. There's heavier stuff. It is a really, really unique collection of tracks that all comes together. And it's just brilliant, brilliant cinematic post way. Um, yeah. The Night is for Dreamers. Number two. My number two, then. It is of Awakening by The Circle. Uh Man, mm. it was hard placing these last couple. I'm telling you, mm. uh, this album blew me away this year. It's the, I mean, if I could, if I could do joint firsts for a lot of the albums, I probably would have just done that, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I just, it, it's just been really, really um, transformational for me. You know, I, I, I found this album to be like quite inspirational, quite useful for if I'm feeling certain ways to like help you know kind of like lose myself in the music and you know cheer up a little bit or mm. or cheer down a little bit if i'm feeling weirdly too happy yeah <laughs> but um look it's got a lot it's symphonic it's post it's black it's death at times it's sad and melancholic at times it's uplifting at times it's aggressive at times it, it's it's a raft of emotions across the whole thing we're really really well crafted very very nicely composed songs that have a decent length to it and take you on a bit of a journey they're a very very talented band this is a debut um i had genuinely i mean they're, they're signed to a label already so there's clearly something there aop records yep. uh and i think like for, for me i'm like i just want to see what else they do i feel i have a feeling this could be like one of those bands you know, you you feel like in tune with something, like you feel really in tune with it, and I just feel so in tune with this band. I loved everything about this album. Uh, yeah, see it in a few years' time, tattooed on my arm or something like mm. that. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm just like, I, th I think it's brilliant. I think it's, well, it, it clearly is. I was going to say it's one of the best albums of the year, but it's number two. The, sec the second best album of the year. Yeah, I'm fascinated what number one is. I can't think of what number one is. Mm. Mm. You will. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I'll go, oh, yeah, for sure, when you say it, um, which would probably be the same with mine. Now, uh, before I tell you, last year, um, I had four out of ten tracks of the year and the albums of the year, I had the same band. It was Lorna Shaw with the same track, with mm. my favourite track of the year and my favourite album of the year. That actually almost happened again this year because my favourite album of the year features a track that was number two on my track's of the year didn't quite make number one listen the moment i heard this album i thought shit this might be number one but let's give it a couple more weeks let's give it time um i had it earlier than it came out because it came out the 24th of november but i've been listening to it since the beginning of november so i've had a lot longer with it um and it stayed at number one even when it came to this list i wrote it in at number one and i said let's see if it stays there and it did it has managed to climb by underdark Released by Church Road Records. 
it combines black metal and post metal and you couldn't get a more perfect album for my personal taste the fact that it tells a story spread over three generations about the degradation experienced by residents of a post-industrial town in the midlands uh following uh that's right neoliberalism era um was very very intriguing to me very exciting and i think underdog did an incredible job of portraying that level and the different areas and the fact that there's a song that songs that are more hopeful there are songs that are more depressing there are songs that are more intense and what's really interesting about this is that when we say black metal and post metal sometimes it leans more towards the other i think this is a great perfect balance of both it is intensely black at times like raw fucking old school chaotic noise uh screams howls and all that and then you've got the post metal with that gorgeous melody deep emotional touching there's an intermission sort of track in this track um number five uh that is so fucking like heart-wrenching that it, it it's only like two minutes long but man it will get a lot of people but it also features like one of the best tracks i've heard this year in managed decline two which is the finale it's only seven tracks long as well but it's a behemoth of release this as I said, the beginning of November, I've listened to this album more than any other this year. And it's, you know, I had let like a month, a little over a month. Um, yep. So yeah, it had to be. It's managed to climb by Under Dark. It's my favorite album of the year. Amazing. I've seen you mention them a few times in recent years. Yeah, it does go like that, doesn't it? When we're doing all yeah. these lists together, yeah. Uh, and then you'll have your... um light bulb sort of ah oh, of course it is moment any second now but uh, my number one album of the year by cat of decapitation is terracite um <laughs> how did i forget that <laughs> yeah i was thinking like uh, yeah, i knew you'd know it as soon as i said even like oh, of course it was uh look it actually got closed for a bit this has been my favorite album of the year for a very very long time it came out in may um i loved it when it came out i loved the singles leading up to it coming out so that was always setting you up like on a good platform thinking like oh i think we had three singles come out and i was like shit i'm loving all of these it's fucking brilliant and then the album came out and i loved everything about it it did get close though purely because as time went by then you know serenity goes of atlantis orbit culture they all dropped their albums later on the year but spent a bit of time sort of internally debating it and i realized that you know considering this came out in may you play any song from this album to me now i'll know the words i'll know every beat i'll wouldn't dare let anyone skip it um and i realized that you know if it's going to have that much of a lasting impact on me and that is any song on the album then i think it deserves my number one spot uh just think they hit it out of the park for me you know took all the best elements from death atlas all the best elements from uh other stuff they've done monolith of humanity etc and just turned it all up a little bit more had a little bit more heaviness at times a bit more anthemic a bit more in the way of vocal creativity it's just everything I love about this band, which is a band that I can listen to and think, God, these are really fucking heavy. Mm. But I find it catchy and interesting and exciting. And in the midst of all of that screamy, snarly bollocks <laughs> that I'm finding like, oh, moments of beauty and art. Isn't that epic and grand? While everyone else is going, what the fuck are you listening to, man? That shit is filthy. <laughs> but I love it. So, yeah, my favorite album of the year. Well, how about that? Our number one album doesn't appear in either of our top 25s. So Cat Decapitation is in my top 25 and Underdark is in your top 25. That might be the first time that's happened. I think you're probably right. In fact, definitely. uh, In fact, I think with our top three. Oh, no, sorry. I had Earn. Earn. Yeah, Yeah. Earn's my third. Yeah. Yeah. But none of my top three appear in your 25 at all. Nope. It just shows how the quality of albums that come out, you know, in a year. It really is. And you said it already, and it bears repeating that. Uh, I think across all these 25, but certainly in the top 10, the distance between them is minute. And it simply comes down to more personal thing. Often I'm looking at like, well, listen, which, you know, similar to you, which one am I listening to more regularly at the moment? Which one do I go back to? Which one do I go? I'm putting this specific track on this album because I love it and so on, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the numbers are arbitrary. These are 25 25 each incredible albums um you know we've doubled up maybe i think i'm no more than five or six overall again which is very very unique um and very cool and those albums obviously are particularly special we both had them but there you go that's it 25 albums of 2023 each what's yours what do you reckon what do you got on ours let us know in the comments thank you very much for watching if you'd like to see more content like this please consider hitting the subscribe button 
button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at GBHBL.com, our full website, where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.